Hi, I'm Jim with Twisted Hobbies. Today, we're going to be building this little poker. Okay, everybody, welcome to the build of the little Foker. So I have my manual, I have my plane, and I've got my Crack Series Pro power combo. I'm gonna lay out the hardware kit, make sure everything is there that looks like it should be there. And I've got all that, and now we're gonna fold over all of our surfaces and loosen them up. We're gonna place some batteries on top of them to hold them over and do this for a minimum of one hour, and that's gonna make it nice and loose so that way your servos aren't working too hard. While we're waiting for that, I'm gonna bind my receiver, center all my servos, and calibrate my ESC. There's a whole video that's gonna be in the description that you can see that in detail if you like. Then I'm gonna take out the, the little pieces inside. Uh, we're gonna take that out of the fuselage and then the wings as well. I put all those extra pieces into a little bag. Someday I'm gonna have enough saved up that I can glue together my own plane. Seriously though, I do save those for uh, a rainy day when I need to make some repairs and I don't have any extra foam. If I lost some foam in a terrible carnage, then I can use some of that to glue it back together. Okay, then we're gonna move on to the elevator. We're putting it in our spar and I sand the spar a little bit and then hit it with some rubbing alcohol to make it nice and clean. And I'm using foam tack to glue that in. On this build, I'm gonna use foam tack wherever possible. I do use CA glue, but the foam tack is my favorite. Next, we're gonna be putting on our wings. They have little tabs to make sure you're putting them on the right side. And I'm also making sure that all of these are, I'm looking at the underside of everything as I do this. I measured from the wing tip to the elevator tip to make sure that I have these all square. Then we're gonna move on to the wing spar. I sand it, I rub it down with rubbing alcohol, and then I dry fit it. It's important to dry fit because you don't wanna get it stuck in there with glue and then have to go back and pull it out. And it, makes, it makes a mess. So make sure it's good, put some glue into it, get it laying flat, and then let it dry for a bit. The manual said to put in the servos at this point, but the servo horn is gonna extend like upward through the fuselage, which means that the table is in the way. So I'm going to start assembling these and then realize that I don't wanna put the servos in quite yet. So I'll put those in at a later step. Uh, I am using this little block of wood to help press in the end links. So I think I finish up the end links and then we put this away for later. Moving on to the fuselage doublers, we're gonna put these on each side of the fuselage and then the wings will sort of mate with them. So I put those at the bottom and the top of the fuselage. The one that's at the top of the fuselage that I haven't touched yet, I had that on wrong. Okay, that's the right way to put it on. So I'm just gonna put these on with some foam tack and then I'm gonna set some batteries on top of them to keep them smushed together a little bit while they dry. I probably should have done these fuselage reinforcements at the same time that I did those doublers. They just go onto each side. The landing gear is gonna pass through these and it just keeps the foam from ripping there. So we put those on each side and then again, put some weight on them, set it aside. Then we move on to the top and bottom wings and we're gonna be doing those wing spars. Again, I just scuff them up. And whenever I'm sanding carbon fiber, I make a good point to keep it nice and clean because the stuff gets everywhere. So I scuffed them up, I wiped them down with rubbing alcohol, I dry fit them, and now we're ready for glue. Be careful on the graphics here because as you put the glue in, if you touch your fingers and they get real sticky, then touch the graphics, it'll pull the graphics off and make it look funny. I use the back side of the blade to, to push those down, get them all the way into there, and then we weigh it down with some batteries, let it sit for an hour, and then we are ready to start assembling the lower fuselage. So I dry fit that, make sure everything looks like it's gonna be good. I lay it down so that I can get an idea of where to put the glue, because you don't wanna put the glue in the opposite tab. Then I push it in, smoosh it together, use my square to make sure it's all perpendicular. If it's not perpendicular, your plane's gonna fly all cattywampus. We don't want that. Now we're gonna do the 
fuselage stiffeners, and they are carbon fiber pieces. It has measurements in the manual that says how long to cut those. And I thought that I had two extra pieces. I don't, those two extra pieces actually go on the top side. So I set all these out and then I sand the tips of them where I'm going to be gluing them in to the EPP foam. So it's kind of shiny everywhere else and slick. And then I just give a little sand and a little rubbing alcohol again. And then I dip each end into some glue and then get these mounted in place. There's only six of these. It's not, not too big of a deal. Also make sure that they are perpendicular with their square. Moving on to the end links for all of the gang horns. I started this, I tried to push one of the end links through and it just wasn't big enough to, to do it. So I had to open them up with my pin vise and then I could push the end links together. I use this little block of wood. I'm gonna show a little video on how I made it. And I just run a drill in reverse to give it a little divot and then you drill into it and that gives you a little place to push in the end link into the ring clip. Then we're gonna move on to installing those gang horns and we just glue them in and make sure they are the same distance out on all of them. You'll notice I'm using some parchment paper. I always put down parchment paper because, well, I don't always do it. I made a mistake once or twice. Uh, you don't wanna end up gluing your model to the table. Now we're gonna be setting up the inner plane struts. I'm gonna dry fit those and get those in place. And this is something I was thinking of removing from the video because I glue these in and then I realized I glued them in backwards. So I thought that they were supposed to be going forwards, but this is not the top of the plane. This is the bottom. So I got everything ready. I started putting it on and I was like, hey, wait a sec, this doesn't work. And then I realized I had made a mistake. So I had to tear all these back out, face them so that they're going towards the back of the plane and then reinstall the bottom wing or successfully install the bottom wing. Once I got that all taken care of, we are going to move on to the landing gear struts. So there's gonna be four of these and they go in through the fuselage reinforcements and they're gonna to come together at the landing gear wing. I didn't know there was a wing for the landing gear, but there's actually four wings on this plane, which is pretty fun. So I get those glued into place where they cross and then we're going to glue them through into the fuselage as well. I was measuring this so I could make sure it was sticking out the same on both sides. Put a little glue down in the channel and then we're going to place the, the links where all of the landing gear struts come together. So we get those glued into place. Then we'll put those struts in through the holes and then glue it all together. Once that's glued, then we can move on to starting on the wheels. And these are in four different pieces. They have the hubs, the tires, and then the wheel panel, or we'll call it a hub cap. So I use some CA glue on those. I did actually go back and use some foam tack because one of them came apart on a hard landing. So I put some foam tack into there and that helped a lot. And then I glued all the way around on both of those. Then those go onto the ends and then there's some white, not nuts, we'll call them white lug nuts that have no threads. They just slip on. The manual said to glue those, but I just slipped them on because you'll probably be dealing with the wheels at some time in the future. Now we're working with the vertical fuselage support that goes from the bottom doubler all the way up to the top doubler. I used some CA glue on this one just because it was a really tight fit and it would be difficult to squeeze in the foam tack on that. 
And now we are ready to give the final install on our servos. When we mount these, we want them to mount them flush so that they are flush to the top of the wing with the servo horns facing up. I forgot one of the end links on the servo horn, so I'm just installing that now. And we're putting in all four servos. So we got our ailerons, we got our elevator and our rudder. I'm cutting the little slots for the edge of the servos. And I'm using foam tack to permanently affix those in place. I used to use hot glue for this because I wanted to be able to swap out servos when they died, but I have not had a single CSP servo of mine die. But back when I was using the cheap plastic gear servos, I had to replace them all the time. So now we're working on the upper fuselage and I'm just dry fitting it to make sure that everything looks like it's going to go into place. Again, you really don't want to get glue on it and then realize that it's not fitting. So I'm, I'm trying to squish it down on top of the vertical support and I was having some trouble getting it squeezed all the way up in there, but I was finally able to smoosh it all the way in. And then I just put my glue onto it and then force those together. I come back to it a few times and squeeze it together. Make sure you true it up and keep it square. Moving on to the spar for the rudder, I'm gonna sand it, clean it, dry fit it, glue it in. And while I'm doing this, I decide I'm going to do the horn for the rudder as well, because they kind of get glued into the same place. Then we're gonna affix it to the fuselage. And that's gonna tie the top and bottom fuselage together. Then there's a diagonal spar that goes into the fuselage. And then the tail skid. Next up is the hardware for the push rods. So I'm gonna cut out all the pieces I'm gonna measure the heat shrink and then divide that distance by four. So that way I'll have four equal size pieces for putting over each of the snap-in links. I'm also gonna sand the end of each of these push rods just a little bit. So that way it grips really nicely on the snap-in link when I glue it. And I use foam tack on these. You could use CA glue, but I like the foam tack. And then you put the heat shrink over and then heat all of it up. Then we're gonna put all the little standoffs onto it. There's five on each of them. And then we're gonna work on the rudder side first. So I feed it through the end link, push all those in, and then I'm gonna just pull them out a little bit, get a little foam tack on them and push them back in. Then I noticed my tail skid wasn't on straight, so I had to put a little more glue on that. And then tightened up that end link, and then we're ready to start on the elevator side. I'm going to install the control horn on that. And while I'm at it, I'll put the control horns on the middle wing for those ailerons as well. I got distracted. I got, got the push rods on the ailerons done. And then we're gonna go back to the elevator push rod. Same idea, put all the standoffs in, pull them out a little bit, put some foam tack on them and push them back in. Then just make sure it's not binding up at all. If they get twisted or anything, then you'll have to adjust it. Next, we're moving on to the interplane struts that go between the middle and top wing, and these will angle forward towards the front of the plane. And just like the other wing, it's going to be a dry fit, and then add some glue and squish it together. Make sure your top wing spar makes it into the doubler on the fuselage. 
here I'm using a little screwdriver to kind of pull those up through the top because they get kind of squished down. And now I'm tightening up all the end links. Probably should have done this before I put that top wing on, but I got those all tightened up. And these are the carbon fiber bracings that go between the fuselage and the rudder area. And on these, I did hit them with a little bit of sandpaper on the ends just so that they tack really nicely. Once they're all lined up, then I moved on to the motor mount and then on to the gang rods. With these, you just thread them all the way through and tighten them on. I didn't have to trim them or anything. I did space them apart at 95 millimeters and that seemed to work really well to make them all parallel. I almost forgot to glue on my little pilot, but I found him, got him glued on. And now we're gonna move on to the electronics. So screwing on the motor. Then we're gonna be plugging in the servos and the ESC into the receiver and getting it all tucked away. Then I'm using my Twisted Hobbies O-ring installation tool. And then I'm going to stick a battery in there and then verify that everything is going the direction I expect it to. All the servos looked good, but the motor, I had to change the direction on it, so I had to swap a couple wires. And then I temporarily attached the battery for the maiden flight, and the maiden flight went really well. I didn't have to do any trimming. All the surfaces were working as expected, and none of the linkages came loose or anything like that. She flew really well, just as I would expect from any Twisted Hobbies plane. At first, I just make sure that they do well in level flight, and then I give it a little bit of acrobatics. So some loops, some aileron rolls, a little bit of hovering, and some inverted flight. Then I'll fine tune the CG and get it exactly where I want to, which for my plane and battery, it was right at the top wing spar. Then I am gonna put on some Velcro to hold my battery in place at the correct location. And that concludes the build of the Little Foker. Let me know if you guys like seeing the Maiden Flight on these. Uh, the space that I'm doing my Maiden Flight is pretty small. It's maybe 70 feet by 80 feet. Um, I should probably choose a more open area that isn't <laughs> surrounded by trees, but this is what I have access to readily. Since this maiden flight, I've done about 15 more flights and I really am enjoying the plane and what it can do. It reminds me a lot of the mini crack pits, but not quite as squirrely. And keep in mind, I am not a professional pilot whatsoever. I'm actually a novice. I've been flying for less than a year. I just really enjoy building and flying the planes. So don't judge my maiden too harshly. I hope you found the build video helpful and I hope that you have fun with your little poker.